I was invited to a networking event, and when I arrived there, uh, some people started introducing me as the Airbnb queen, and it caught me a little bit off guard. I was like, oh yeah, well it makes sense. Um, you know, I'm the one-stop shop for Airbnb. Anything that they have questions about, if they're thinking about doing Airbnb, it's always like, oh yeah, you should definitely ask Heidi. She's the Airbnb queen, and so I was crowned with this title and. You know, it was something that I wasn't expecting, but I kind of liked it. And so now I've grown to really own the title and, and really started showing people how to do Airbnb. My name is Heidi Sowens, and today I see myself as a visionary. I've been able to grow as a small business owner, but definitely taking my profession seriously as an Airbnb host. I'm passionate about sharing my knowledge to others so that they can learn from my experience and my mistakes. I want to take the guesswork out of everything so that they don't have to make the same mistakes as I did when I started Airbnb. I'm now leading the hospitality industry as a community leader volunteering position with Airbnb. I started Airbnb because my parents were looking to retire and they wanted to retire in two to three years and we were trying to find the best possible way to get them to retire as soon as possible and so we're like hey what can we do and that's when Airbnb landed in our lap and we decided to go for it. It was a complete leap of faith and when we started remodeling my husband and I we started DIYing every single apartment there. And once we finished the first one, we put it up on Airbnb. I became an Airbnb host and we got hooked. And it was from then on that we finished every single apartment and we put it up on Airbnb. And now we have retired my parents. They were able to retire in exactly the timeline that they needed. And so after that, my husband and I were like, hey, this is a real business and we can definitely make this happen. So let's get started. Hey guys, welcome to our live webinar. This is the first time we're doing a live webinar and we're super excited to be here with you today. And I can't believe that we actually did this 24 hour challenge. So, you know, my name is Heidi Soens and I am the founder of Made by Soens. And so I wanted to share with you guys the struggles and everything that we went through with this 24 hour challenge. And I'm super excited that you guys are here. So let me know, you know, who you guys are and where you guys are actually co uh, coming at, coming from. So tell me, hey, you know what? I'm, I'm Heidi. I'm from El Paso, Texas. So let us know where you guys are watching us from. It's super excited for us to know who you are as well. And so let me just tell you really quickly about what was this 24 hour challenge all about. And so this 24 hour challenge was the fact that, you know, we've been doing Airbnb for many, many, many years, but we've heard so many people saying, Hey, you know, it's so hard to start Airbnb. I think it's so difficult. Like, I don't know how to do design. I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do that. And we're like, you know what? I mean, I'm pretty sure that we can definitely do some sort of challenge. And so this was not my idea. I'm going to say this right now. Um, doing a 24 hour challenge, I thought it was going to be super hard, but I'm really glad that we did it because this prove to us that our systems work. And so that's what we were here to share with you today. It's the fact that, you know, once you guys actually have systems, you guys actually see what you need to be doing and you have checklists and you have procedures, then guys, you can do it in 24 hours because I didn't. And it's not because I'm the Airbnb queen, all right? It's not because I'm special or something. It's because early in the game, we were able to put processes about what we're doing and how to follow through on furnishing an Airbnb, on getting it ready, and guess what? Having our first guest there. So a little backstory about the 24-hour challenge. We had a guest reach out to us through the Airbnb platform. And she had originally booked another Airbnb of, our, of ours. And then she started asking me questions literally the day before her check-in. And she's like, hey, you know what? Um, does this house... Hi, hi from Midland, Oklahoma. Thank you guys um, for, for watching. <laughs> we're watching this is the first time okay so you guys have to bear with me we have a whole team here but you know it's the first time that we're live so you know you're gonna see me kind of like everywhere but anyways back to the story so we did have the guests here and we have um all the people that were part of this we're like hey you know what um 
what's happening with the whole um, guest, right? She reached out. She's like, I need it to be wheelchair accessible. But see, my listing, the one that she originally booked, it's not wheelchair accessible. And so she starts asking me questions. She's like, hey, what happened? Can I, what, well, she didn't say what happened. Okay, give me a second. She asked, is this Airbnb wheelchair accessible? And then I'm like, you know what? It's not. And then, so she was about to cancel the reservation. And I told her, I was like, wait, 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 wait. I just bought a quadplex and I just bought a quadplex that has one of the units that it's ADA. And so I told her, I was like, you know, I just got the keys today. All right. And she's like, can I see any pictures? And because I already had a reservation with her, I could send her pictures about it. And so I was like, yeah, sure. And so I sent her the pictures. I sent her how big and wide the, the, bedroom door is the bathroom door is and so I, I sent it to her and she's like oh I love it like I'll take it and I told her like you know again I just got the keys and so I'm like you know I just got the keys it's not furnished and guys I don't do long-term rentals all right I only do short-term rentals I only do Airbnb and so I'm not gonna start leasing my newly built quadplex to long-term rentals because I I, I really don't like to have someone stay there for a whole year and then, you know, not being able to check on things and all that stuff. But mainly it's the fact that, you know, she didn't need a, she didn't need a long-term rental. She needed a short-term rental. So, you know, we're still good there. But then, so she's like, Hey, you know what? Can I, can I check in? When could I check in? And I was like, it's completely unfurnished. I just got the keys today. So give me a second and let me see how fast I can actually get it for you. And so that's when the 24 hour challenge was born. We're like, you know what, let's take this challenge and let's see how fast we can actually get an Airbnb ready because we already have the guest waiting for it. And so you guys, the reason why I do Airbnb, it's because I really care for my guests. You know, I'm in the hospitality industry. I know that I'm in the hospitality industry. And that's why, you know, I really want to provide this solution to my guests. I mean, I already had the booking right from another property. And so the fact that I was able to accommodate this for her and she was so happy when she checked in, she was like, I can't believe you guys got it done so quickly. You know, thank you so much. And so it was, it was really heartwarming for us to really see how we affect the outcome of someone else, right. On like their life and how comfortable now they're staying at their, you know, new Airbnb. Awesome. So, you know, so that's how mainly what I wanted to tell you guys about how was the 24 hour challenge born? It was because we saw a need and we wanted to really finish it for her. And there were a lot of struggles, you guys, like the fact that we didn't have AC, we didn't have electricity on. <laughs> I mean, we were like, I think, I think Heidi's kind of crazy. <laughs> and so everybody might be complaining while we're doing the challenge. It was a lot of work. I was so tired, like working literally straight 12 hours in heels, running around. Like it was, it was a lot of work, like while we were doing the challenge, but I will tell you guys this, I'm never going to do it again. I think 24 hours, it's a bit of a stretch. It's possible. I don't want to do it again, but mainly what we figured out, it's the fact that, you know what, if we were able to do it in 24 hours, it's because we had systems that we could easily follow, that I could share with my employees, that I could share with my staff, that I could share with people so that we can actually get it done. And that's why we were able to really accomplish this challenge on time. It's because we had checklists. We had our systems that we've been building these systems for years. and so guys, they work, they truly work and they completely take the guesswork out of it so that you can actually just go check, check, check. I got this. I got this. I got this. So that's what we are here for. And so we're going to show you a quick video on how things turned out the before and after and all the in between. Today, we're super excited because we're doing a challenge and our challenge today is to have our next Airbnb ready within less than 24 hours. And it sounds crazy, I know it does, and a lot of people might think that, hey, that's not possible, but guess what? We have been partnering up and working directly with local businesses in El Paso. And so today we're super excited because I'm gonna be able to furnish this new Airbnb super fast within hours, thanks to my good friend, Roberto. 
Thank you, Heidi. Thank you for inviting us to be part of this. And thank you for support the local business here in El Paso. Uh, we're more than glad to can help you guys. And we're now a family. We, are, we have more than a year been part of this. And remember, guys, when it comes to value, quality, and selection, nobody be charging. Awesome. So that you guys finished this video, I know that you guys love it. I know it was a lot. So let me know what you think about in the comments. You know, again, we, we guys, we're live here. So any comments that you have or any questions about just the quick things that I've talked about, let me know. Make sure that you guys are interacting with us throughout the whole time so that we can get engaged and that we can answer some questions for you while we have you here. All right, so before I get started into the processes, because really that's what's important for me, I want you guys to learn something today. I want you guys to actually see like, hey, like I, I, I took this free webinar and again, right, it's free. So I took this free webinar and I'm able to get started with my Airbnb. And if I can do that for you today, like it's going to be amazing. But just in case you guys want more information, we do have a couple of offers that I want to get out of the way right now so that I can actually start you know, diving in into the processes. And so just quickly, we're going to show you guys briefly our offers. And it's because we have our bronze, our, our silver and our gold packages. And so we're going to show them again a little bit later on. And I just want you guys to see like, really, if you guys can take a screenshot really quick uh, on what are the, are the packages so that you guys can see it later on. But mainly this is about how you can get our digital course. You can get our checklist. You can get one-on-one -on -one coaching calls with me. You can also get all of our case studies. You can get so much information and knowledge and you can really learn from my experience and I will take the guesswork out of everything. You know, for Airbnb, anything you can really like you can now you can do tree houses you can do glamping um you know you can actually build a ufo <laughs> there's so many different things that you can start doing um for airbnb and again right what's airbnb well airbnb it's something that you offer for a sleeping arrangement for your guests and so that they can have the best experience possible that's the main main goal for them to have the best experience. How can I provide my guests the best experience as an Airbnb host? And so that's what I'm going to show you guys right now. But I do have to let you know what is it that you have to do. So the first thing you have to do is to learn how to select property. And so like anything in real estate, location, location, location. All right. Make sure that you guys um, realize that this is real estate, right? And so a recommendation that I do every time I'm buying property because I don't rent, okay? I don't do arbitrage. But um, for for location wise, I make sure that we have um, we're close to a highway. You know, I would say about five, 10, 15 minutes. How easy can you get back into a highway? You know, easy access to a highway. So that's the number one thing. And then also regarding location, it's the neighborhood. You know, how safe does it feel? How does it feel? Like, how, would you feel comfortable staying there? Would you feel comfortable sending your family to stay there? Would you feel comfortable, your your daughter, your, your, your wife, you know, your mom to stay there? So, you know, the neighborhood's really important when it comes down to safety. And I know that there's a lot of places, like, for example, vacation uh, markets or urban markets. So then, but just think about this every single time. 
really realize like, hey, would I feel comfortable staying here? Because you can't expect someone to pay money to stay there if you wouldn't even stay there. And so that's why it's really important for for you to see that and really check out the neighborhood before you buy that property or if you did if you do decide to rent it you know to do Airbnb in that location it's going to be really important for you to really stick down to the neighborhood now the other thing that it's also regarding the neighborhood it's your neighbors all right so if you decide to buy this property and it's a fixer upper and you're like going to be doing all this amazing work and you're going to be pouring all of this money into it Guys, if your neighbors are not in the same tone with you, well, that's going to actually not help you. The fact that your house is the best in the neighborhood, it, it will affect you. Because, see, when the guest is coming in and they're, they're like, hey, well, what's going on? It might be like that your house is the best, but if you have right next door, you might have an abandoned property, a graffiti property, or just a neighbor that really doesn't take care of the property, the maintenance, then that's going to affect your property. All right. Because most of the time the guest will write you bad reviews, even though it's nothing that you can control because you can't control your neighbors, it will still affect you as an Airbnb host. So then that's why I suggest for you to make sure that you'd really check out the neighborhood before you decide on that property. And so again, location, location, location. You guys have to talk about how easy can I get into a highway because you're not the one that it's staying there, right? What if I don't know the property? What if I don't know the area? So usually the people that stay in Airbnbs, they're passing through, they might be coming for a few days. And so they don't know the area. And so the fastest that they can get back on a highway, then that's going to be the fastest for them to move around and to do and to go to where they need to go a convention center downtown you know any like i don't know disneyland or whatever so that's why it's important for you to see how close can you be to a highway any highway and then again you know the neighborhood safe space would you feel comfortable staying there and lastly what about your neighbors like how are how are things right next to you because people won't feel safe to get down from their car if they don't feel comfortable with their surroundings and so i don't care how beautiful the house is and how much money you've actually put into the remodel most of the time the guests won't even get into the door because they'll feel uncomfortable with the area and so that's what you have to think about and again you know we are in neighborhoods and so usually as an Airbnb host, we're we're putting a lot of, of time and a lot of effort and a lot of money into our properties. But you also have to think about this when you decide to do an Airbnb, make sure that you're talking to your neighbors, make sure you tell them what you're about to do. Hey, you know what? This is what I'm going to buy this property for. And this is what's going to become. And here's my number. And you can exchange numbers. You know, it's just knocking on the door. And that way people know what you're doing and they also feel comfortable with what you're doing at the same time that you feel like, okay, well, yeah, my neighbors are in, we're in a good relationship. And so, you know, one of the things that I'm going to be talking a lot about today, it's relationships. All right. But yeah, so now we know, Hey, what's the first thing you got to select the property. Now we're moving into transforming the property. And so what's important about the transformation from the property, you know, it it's really depends on anyone. If you're going to do construction, that's up to you. But for example, for this 24 hour challenge, we didn't do any construction. We didn't paint anything. It literally, I guys, I got the keys and then I went and I started shopping. That's all we had to do. And so that's why it was super, super, super cool because we were able to do it super fast. And I know that maybe you don't have to do it in 24 hours, which I really don't recommend you do it in 24 hours because even for me as the Airbnb queen, like <laughs> it took a toll on me. All right. And so uh, make sure that you, but that you know, like, Hey, this can be done really, really fast. And so that's why it's important for you to transform the property. And see, this is what I mean with transforming the property. I mean to just make sure that you have some sort of design into the property. Hey, you know what? We're going to go shopping. We're going to buy these types of beds. We're going to buy these types of, of nightstands. We're going to have wall scones into the, the, um, for the bedside tables, um, 
What's another thing that I love to do? It's adding shelving, any shelves that you can provide, anything that they can like put in their stuff, like in a lot, a lot of sitting areas. All right. So, you know, your sofa has to be super comfortable. Your mattresses have to be super comfortable, but you can also add multiple seating areas throughout the space. For example, just a regular chair or maybe a bench. Um, we even added a bench into the closet because we knew that she was wheelchair. And so we wanted to make sure that she was able to get ready you know, in the closet. So like those things are important when you start really thinking about those things and really like, how can I help my guests and how can I make sure that they have the best experience possible? And that's what makes the difference. And that's what makes you the money. And so again, transforming, we're not talking about construction transforming. We're just talking about really bringing in and bringing in furniture and bringing decor in and bringing all of the essentials. And again, you guys, we have everything that you need written down. So we have all of the checklists so that we don't have to be worried about, Hey, what should I do here? No. Hey, you know what? For this bedroom, you need the bed, you need the mattress, you need the box spring, you need the nightstands, you need the, the, the lamps, you need the bench. You, like, so we have it written down so that we're not trying to guess about, Oh, what am I, else am I missing? That's what I'm trying to like, tell you guys, like, it's super cool. The fact that now we take the guesswork out of everything with this amazing systems and checklist. Okay. And so again, transformation, something really simple, what you can do with furniture, with art decor. And one of the things that I know that my properties really stand out from, it's the fact that, you know, we really do add white bedding. All right. We add white everything. And I know a lot of people are scared to do white, but again, once you really learn how easy it is to treat white, then you don't want to move from that. You don't want to deviate from that. And so we, we use white bedding, white sheets, white towels, white, white bathrobes, like everything that it's hygienic, that it's going to touch the, the, the guest's body. We use white. And so that's why we decided, and, and it, it kind of like, it gives it that really clean feeling as well. And so that's why it's important for us to use white. It's for the guests to feel like they're the first guest every single time into that property. Awesome. And so we got the select, we got the transformation from the property. You know, if you guys don't know really much what to do, start checking out YouTube or even Pinterest. Um, and so we're moving on into how to make your first Airbnb listing. Okay, so there's going to be, uh, once you decide, once you're finished with the, like the transformation of the property and you have everything uh, ready to go, you have all of the furniture there and everything's clean, then the next thing you need to do is you have to hire a professional photographer to make sure that they take the pictures for your listing. Because if you, you can't finish your Airbnb listing without pictures, okay, it won't let you finish the listing without the pictures. And so you have to make sure that you decide, Hey, okay, we're going to hire a professional photography so that they can get all of the pictures for you. You have to tell them that they have to do it landscape, the most natural light possible. If they can shoot you some close-ups, it's going to be really good. But the most important thing, it's really showcasing all of the amenities that your property has to offer. And I'm not just talking about really like outdoorsy amenities, like the pool or the outdoor kitchen or the jacuzzi. No, we're also talking about the amenities that you provide inside the house. So for example, that you have a fully stocked kitchen, that you have everything that they could possibly need, the how beautiful the, the bedrooms look, like, hey, this is what you have. And so even like if it's just one picture of one closet, at least showing that you do have a closet and that you do provide hangers and that you do provide an ironing board, that's what's important as well. So with your pictures, I would say, I would recommend for you to pay for at least 20 to 30 pictures and to make sure that they are able to capture everything. They can tuck themselves in a tight corner and they can try and like take the whole picture. I won't, one of the most important things about real estate picture or professional photography picture is that you got to tell them not to modify the color saturation. And the reason it's because we don't want to lie. All right. We want to make sure that when you are looking through the listing, through your listing, it looks exactly like the pictures. All right. That's the main thing because then you will show to your guests that, Hey, yeah, you know, this is exactly what we're, what we, what we paid for. And then they get to the, they get to the property, they get to the Airbnb and it looks exactly the same. So that's, what's really important to make sure that you're not lying. So 
I've gotten some pictures from some professional photography where they changed the color of the curtains, they changed the color saturation, and I'm just like, uh, well, it really doesn't look like the pictures. So can you make sure you don't, don't put filter on my pictures, please? Um, because that's why it's important to capture them during natural light. Okay. And so that's going to be one of the most important things about you doing your listing. It's having all of the pictures ready. Choose at least five pictures that really like stand out and that showcase most of the home. So for example, you could put the bedrooms, you could put the pool, you could put um, the, the, the living area, the kitchen. See, I do a lot of kitchens because I understand that the people that usually book Airbnbs are women. And it's not that they want to cook. It's the fact that they want to have the possibility of cooking because they can save some money when they're traveling, when they're on vacation. And so, but what's one of the, what, what's your hero picture? What's your money-making picture? And so that's going to be the most important for you to use as a cover photo. And so when you get back those professional pictures, you're going to be able to tell which one's going to be your like, yeah, this is the one. But even if you decide about one and it doesn't book, you can always change it. So. You know, that's just my take on it. Make sure that you choose the best picture to use for your cover photo. But moving into like the whole Airbnb listing. I have a question. Okay, yeah, sure. What is the average cost for something like that with a photographer, says uh, Veronica Flato. Veronica, where are you from? Are you here in El Paso or, well, either way, um, it, it really varies, but I've seen many different price ranges. Midland. Midland? Okay, so I don't think it's much different than El Paso. It might be just a little bit more. Um, but here in El Paso, we usually pay between 150 to 250 for the professional photography. And the only difference is that you got to tell them, you got to really explain to them. You know, so you can hire any real estate pro uh, uh, photographer, but you just really got to tell them like, hey, but this is for like an Airbnb. And so sometimes they, they haven't done Airbnbs before, but once you tell them, then you can tell them exactly what I'm telling you now. Okay. I need some close-ups. Okay. I need you to tuck yourself in a corner corner. Oh, I need you to make sure that you like that you're able to see the whole space, right? In one photo, can you see the whole space? And it's not for you to lie and, and for it to make, I don't want them to take pictures for you that will make the, the room look bigger than it actually is. And that's why you, it's a little bit tricky just because that's what real estate <laughs> photographers do, right? They're trying to sell the house. They're trying to sell the house. They're trying to say like, oh yeah, this is a huge, like this is a 2000, you know, square footage home. And, but then for Airbnb, we have to be really, really honest. And so that's why you got to tell them like, no, I don't want you to like fake it. I want it to look how it is. And so I would say between 150 to 250, usually that's our price point on what we pay. Um, depending on the experience also of the photographer. So I hope that's helpful. But okay. And then so you got the pictures, all right, which is the number one thing. You gotta make sure you have the pictures once the space is ready to go. And then once you're doing your Airbnb listing, there's gonna be a couple of things that it's gonna ask you before you can actually go live. And the other thing is the title. So see, again, go to Airbnb.com and start searching as a guest. What do you usually look for? You, you look, number one thing, you check out those photos. You're like, oh, you start scrolling and you're like, okay, wait, I like this one. Right? Which is a cover photo. That's your money making photo. So, okay, I like this one. And then the other thing that you notice before you actually go into the listing, okay, you might swipe really quickly to see like the next five photos just to see like, okay, well, is it just that photo? Or what else do they have? And then the next thing you'll do, it's like, you'll read the title. Because once you read the title, that'll give you some idea of where the property is, what does it really have without you actually going into the, the listing. So see, all of this is happening before someone even clicks on your listing. And that's why it, things are really important. So the title has to be some catchy title. It also has to add, my recommendation is for you to have the location, the amenities, um, or the design into that title. You only have 30 words. And so that you have to be really precise, like, okay, you know, if it's going to, if it's an apartment, I'm not going to write down apartment because it's taking my words. So I'm going to put APT, right? So you have to figure out what, like, how can I save words, but like letters? And then, um, and then how can I make sure that people 
really like see what it is. And so, like I'll give you guys an example. We have uh, an Airbnb, and it has a pool, an outdoor kitchen. It has a design that it's a rustic design, and then um, it's on the east side of the city. And so we have. The name that I've given it, it's actually called the Rustic Resort. So it says Rustic Resort East EP Pool, right? And so those things, it's what captures the attention. I didn't write there how many bedrooms it had. I didn't write there, you know, like, oh, it has a ki like a kitchen. Like, I wrote exactly what was like the amenities that will catch the attention of the guest also i pointed out some sort of location so maybe it's close to the 375 maybe it's close to the i-10 and so i would point that out um you know or maybe it's like five minutes to downtown maybe it's 10 minutes to downtown or 10 minutes to the airport, 10 minutes to Fort Bliss. So th those things are really important. Like, okay, what is it that people are looking for when they're going through the, through the search engine? Because you don't really have the location there, right? You can't see the address. But if you give them a little bit of information on the list, on the title, then at least they, they have an idea. And then if that's the area that they want to be at, then they're going to be able to continue like looking through your listing. Okay, so then we got the professional photos, we got the title, then the next thing that they look for, it's the price. And so let's say that they're between this one and this one. Okay, so the price is going to be really important. And so we use dynamic pricing, we use price labs, and I highly recommend you guys to, to actually, you know, get price labs and incorporate it into your pricing, because what it does is that it, it has a variable. So your pricing will never be like static. It will, it will never be the same. So if you say, Oh, a hundred dollars per night, and then it's like set it and forget it for like the rest of time. No price life doesn't do that. They actually take the average or they start really, really like changing your prices depending on what's happening around. And I think that's really important because see the, the smart pricing for Airbnb doesn't do that. Um, yet might do it sometime, but right now it's not doing that. And so if you're able to incorporate that, then it really varies your pricing and you don't leave money on the table because see the more that you vary your price, then some, per, like someone might book it at 150, but then the next day it's 165, but then the next day it's 130. And so like, it really like, it gives you all of these different prices. And then, so you end up making more money by having it dynamic. But this is going to be a quick tip that I'm going to give you guys really quick about the pricing is that choose the 20% discount for your first three guests. Every single time you're doing a new Airbnb listing, always choose the 20% discounts for your three guests. But it's also going to ask you, do you want to add discounts for your weekly and your monthly? And you're going to put zero. All right. You're going to put zero and you're going to trust me with this because it happened to me. <laughs> I didn't know that the that the discounts would like bundle up. And this was, you know, a long time ago. And so I didn't know that. And so I offered the 20% discount to my first three guests. Well, and then I put a, a weekly discount of like 5%. And then I put like a, a monthly discount of like 15%. And so guess what happened? So we, I got my first guest and that guest booked for six weeks. And she was the first guest to book. She didn't only get the 20% discount. She also got an extra 15% discount. And so total, she got 35% discount. And I swear to you that month, we barely like broke even where I knew that I shouldn't have broken even. I should have made profit. I should have made cash flow. but it was because I didn't understand the whole discount situation that Airbnb had just at it. And so that's why make sure you, you put zeros. All right. You choose the 20% discount. Yes. Every single time, because that's going to help you get reviews in the door. And the faster that you can get reviews, the faster you can become super host and that you can see people are always going to book based on the reviews. And so that's another thing, right? When they're checking out the listing, you know, they want to see what are people talking about it. And so you are a new Airbnb host what you all, all you can really offer as a new Airbnb host with the Airbnb listing, all you can really offer it's the discount because people will book it because of the price point, but don't put your price too low where you're not even making money. So really know your, really know your pricing. That's why use price labs for, so that it tells you really how you should be pricing your, your space, but then do offer that 20% discount to start getting the reviews. The more reviews you get, the more that you will get bookings.
Okay. And so we got. Yes, we have a question from Denise Melchor. How do you deal with pet fees? And if there's there are any damages, do you charge an advance fee prior to them have a right? Yes. So for pet fees and cleaning fees, it's the same. It's in the same um, place where it's like additional charges. And so you are actually going to be able to set a cleaning fee and then you're also able to set a pet fee. And so if you do decide to let um, pets come into your space, which I also recommend you guys, because that's going to help you be always on the search engine. And so if you do decide to be pet friendly, you can add a pet fee. The only thing is that the pet fee, it's a one time fee. So if someone's staying there for a week or someone's staying there for two days or someone's staying there for a whole month, it's only going to charge that fee just like what they do with the cleaning fee. It doesn't vary depending on how many time, how many days they're staying. But you can go into your house rules and you can add this additional fee. For example, what I do in my house rules, I'm like, hey, this is a pet friendly space. We do allow pets, but we do charge, you know, $15 per night per pet. And so if they choose to bring their pets and they're, they're, they know that they have to pay that extra fee because Airbnb only collected a portion of it. So it really just depends on the length of the stay on how much, how many nights they're going to be staying there. But yes, you can at least collect something from Airbnb automatically by adding a pet fee. All right. And so, um, again, so now we have the listing. We know we have to have the photos. We have to have a catchy title. We have to have dynamic pricing. We have to offer that 20% discount to our first three guests. And then we have to make sure that we have um, the custom link. Okay. So once you actually know, it's not the custom link that's next. It's the description. Um, guys, use AI. All right. Now it's become super, super easy to start writing paragraphs and start doing all of these things. Now I don't have to really think about what am I going to describe this new Airbnb? No, I use AI. All right. I go to ChatGPT. I tell it, hey, write a short description for my Airbnb listing that has this address, that it's a three bedroom, two bath. It has this design and it has a pool. And, it, and so I tell ChatGPT what it has. And then ChatGPT gives me a short description. I edit the description. I make sure that it makes sense to what I'm offering. I put it on the short description. And then I tell ChatGPT, hey, okay, I have this, but I need a long description for my Airbnb listing. And then so ChatGPT gives me the answer. And then I just modify it. I edit it. I make sure that I remove the address from the actual um, description. But, you know, it just gives ChatGPT a better idea of the surroundings around on, around the address so that you can talk about the restaurants that you have. You can talk about all of the um, maybe shopping centers or what's close by. And that's why I always add the address on ChatGPT. So ChatGPT knows where I am. But at the same time, I remove that from my from my actual description on Airbnb. So you really you guys really have to think about that. <laughs> and so, um, again, we have that, the description is going to be your next steps. And then once you have all those things, you're ready to go. You really are ready to go live, but then you're going to go to your Airbnb listing. You're going to add that cleaning fee. You're going to add that pet fee. If you have anything, you're going to check out, um, the checking times, the checkout times I've been using 11 AM, 10 AM for checkout. I've been using 4 PM for check-in. You're going to add the house rules. The house rules are super important. We actually have a PDF with the house rules that we use. So that we make sure that everything is there so that you know and your guest knows exactly what they need, what they're getting themselves into when they're booking your property. And then now we talk about a custom link. And so I'm going to talk to about this super quickly. Um, the custom link, it's something that you can share quickly to someone that you know. All right. So you're not going to make up this huge custom link. Um, because it's going to be really hard for you to remember. And so, for example, I have a condo in Playa del Carmen. And that condo has a, a boho design. Well, I just named it Playa Boho. And every single time I share my custom link, I know every single property. And I have 50, you guys, all right? And so every single property, I know it in the back of my head. Because I'm like, that's how quickly I can share it. The more I share it, the more people see it. And the more people see it, the more bookings come in. And so the more we cash flow. So that's why it's important, right? We're all here because of financial freedom. We all want that flexibility. And so it all comes down to these really quick tips. And so make sure that you choose a custom link that you 
will remember. Not your guest, not anyone else. You, because you're the one sharing it. How fast can I share my listing? The more that you'll make money. Okay. And so now we're moving on into super host. So how can you become a super host? All right. There are certain criteria that we have um, to become a super host. Number one, it's to have 4.8 more on reviews. And that's why the first three reviews are super crucial because if you start getting all five stars, then it's going to be really easy for you to qualify for super host. The other thing is that you have to have at least 10 reservations or 100 days within three, three reservations. So that would be if you had, for example, a long term person there, it would have to be uh, like certain different criteria for that. But then you also have to make sure you have 100 percent, no, 90 percent response rate. And then the other thing is that you have to have less than 1% cancellation. And so those four factors are what makes you a super host. And guys, I'm really happy to tell you that I've never lost my super host status. I've always been a super host and it's, it's been years, but the only way that I've been able to keep my super host status is the number one thing, communication. All right. You guys have to know that you are in the hospitality industry. You have to care for your guests. You have to care about their experience. And so if you're not caring, then you're not making money. Believe me, you're going to be pushed out of the game. And so that's why it's important for you to really have great communication with your guests every step of the way during, before, after they've been staying in your property. Um, you have to have anything that um, promptness and be polite and always be responding to their messages. And this is the beautiful thing. Guys, I have a 100% response rate from all of my listings. But I'm not the one responding. All right? Start using third-party apps. Start using automated messages. I use Hospitable. And again, you guys, I'm really telling you the apps that I use so that you guys can write them down and you guys can actually... I'm not even giving you referrals or anything like that. Just download them. Start uh, really like getting to know the app so that when you're doing Airbnb, you're good to go. But I use the Price Labs for dynamic pricing. I use host, Hostfully for all of my bookings. It's a PMS system, which is called, um, it's a property management software. And within that, that system, I'm able to use guidebooks as well. And then I, I've always loved to use Hospitable. And Hospitable is for my automatic messages. It really makes it personable. It really makes it feel like they're talking to you. And that's why I love Hospitable for their automatic messages. Um, so even though I have 100% re response rate, guess what? I'm not the one responding. The, the app is. It doesn't matter if I don't have signal. It doesn't matter if I'm on a plane. It doesn't matter if my phone died. If there's a check-in coming in, they're going to get the check-in instructions. If there's a, a, a random question, like, for example, some of the questions that we get a lot are, like, about parking. And so if, 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 the, if the app recognizes a certain language on the question, it'll automatically send the response within less than 30 seconds. Guys, that's why people are always like, oh, wait, like, you're so great. I love that you're so good. Like, I've never had a better com communication with my with my host before. Well, because we really are. And we have, again, automated our systems. So that's why it's super cool and super important that you could do it, too. It doesn't mean you have to be like on your phone, you know, every step of the way, every single time. No, like you can definitely be doing what you're doing with your life. And then your apps and, and your systems start are automated and then you can, you know, really get the guests to have the best experience possible. So, you know, what, how are you able to be a super host? Well, you have to set guest expectations before they book. So, for example, be very honest on your description. If you have squeaky doors, if you have squeaky floors or maybe you have low water pressure on the master, you know, really be transparent, like be honest so that they don't come in and they're like, oh, like, this is not what I signed up for. This is not. And so that they're going to start, you know, really like digging you on certain points. And so make sure that you're transparent, you're, you're really like honest, but in a positive way. So don't try to be like, don't, don't, don't. Like, no, really like be positive. And so set their expectations early on. Also, you know, again, communicate with guests quickly and clearly and as, as respectfully and as, and as polite as possible. Um, keep your space clean, comfortable, and clutter-free, okay? And so that's really important for you to make sure that even though you, you don't have to have as many things and you can have as many personal things, let's suppose you're renting like
a room in your house or you're renting like a guest house, you know, you, it doesn't have to be so personal. But if you do want to add some personal touches, then you can add local touches when you can from artwork products. And so here we have what we what we do. OK, so this is our toiletry kit. It's been a long time that we have been working on this. And so we really realized that we needed this for our short term rentals. It's perfect for short term rentals. You guys can even buy it this on Amazon. We have it on Amazon now. It's called Aisa So, which is after our daughter. It's called it's from Made by Sewins. And we have everything that you need for you to provide to your guests so that they feel taken care of. Guys, you have no idea how many great five star reviews I've gotten because of this bad boy. All right. And I love it. I love it. I love it. It has everything that you could possibly need for your toiletry. So that's why it's super important. But this is a way that you can add personal touches into your Airbnbs without having a picture of yourself or something like that. You can maybe add sweets. You can, you know, provide local sweets from your from your local area. Um, I've been working a lot with creatives. So you can add like an artwork. You can add a mural. Like all of those things are really cool. I've added a lot of artwork from from people that, you know, they, they do great designs. And I'm like, you know what? This is exactly what I need for this Airbnb. Can you create something for me? And so, you know, guys, really start looking at your local community for help and how you can grow your short term rental business, your hospitality industry. And then, you know, give the guests the best experience uh, you'd like to have if you were staying there. So really get yourself into the guest shoes. Like, what would I like to get provided if I were to be staying here? Or, you know, let's suppose you're in an area that it rains a lot. Well, then always make sure that there's umbrellas, ponchos, you know, stuff that they could use. Um, for example, in our Playa del Carmen one, we always leave the, um, the beach umbrella. We leave beach chairs for them to use. Uh, we leave the towels designated for the beach so that they're not using our white towels see for the pool and for the beach we always make sure to leave separate towels for that and then like our white nice towels are always going to be for you know personal use into the airbnb okay and so whew, we're almost running out of time you guys <laughs> But I'm, I'm really glad and I hope that these processes that I just explained to you are really helpful and that it can help you get started with your Airbnb. And so I'm going to talk really quickly and we're going to show this video now about contracts and contacts. OK, so this is what's important. So check out this video. Remember, contacts equals contracts. And the only difference between them, it's the R. That R stands for relationships. And so make sure that you're building relationships with your local businesses in your local area. And if you do this, then you're able to stay within budget. You're able to furnish your Airbnb ASAP. You're able to really, really grow your portfolio and grow your business. And so I think that's why it's so important for us to continue building relationships with local businesses around our area. Make sure you do the same thing because that will equal more cash flow. Okay. So cool. Anyway, so, you know, I really wanted to show you guys that video because it, it's really all about relationships. And so the reason why I know that I was able to complete this 24 hour challenge, it's because I was I've been building relationships with local businesses around my area every year and it's been growing and growing and I'm super comfortable and I'm super happy and you know it really helps my business but it also helps their business and so once you start supporting local and that you're providing and giving back to your city that's what's important and so see again what I mentioned in the video it's that you know contacts equals contracts and relationships are the most important thing for you to be able to succeed in a business like this, when all you care about is the hospitality industry and you care about your guests every step of the way. And so I'm going to tell you guys really quickly how I was able to get to the quadplex and what I was able to purchase just recently. Number one, building relationships. I've been building relationships with my realtor for years and she knows exactly what I need every single time and she was able to find me this great deal which is a quadplex i was able to get it owner finance with only 10 percent down and a six percent interest guys i wouldn't have been able to find that deal even though i'm in the hospitality industry i'm always growing my portfolio 
But I wasn't able to find that deal because I'm not into real estate. That's not my focus. My focus is Airbnb, the Airbnb queen. And so I have to really rely on my realtor to make sure that she understands what I need and that she knows exactly what I would like to do for the property that it's going to be my next Airbnb. And so um, she was able to bring me this deal over. We were able to get it done. And the way that I was able to get financing for this deal it's, I had to bring 10% down. And so that's actually unheard of you guys, 10% down in an investment property in a quadplex. Uh, it's unheard of, but I was able to have the money because I've been doing uh, a financial solution through solar. And so I've been doing solar for a couple of months now. And what I started doing is that I started implementing solar into my, my, my first, my Airbnb and then um, I was able to pull cash out from it. So instead of doing a cash out refi, I was able to install solar and then get the cash. And the cash that was that was after I, I paid for the solar, then the cash uh, difference, I was able to use it to get another property. And so exactly, I've been doing that rinse and repeat. And now again, I'm at 50 Airbnbs in less than, I would say what, like, this year, this year, at the beginning of the year, I was at 30. <laughs> so yeah, in, in a couple of months, I was able to scale up really quickly because I'm, I'm not talking about uh, 20 new properties. I'm talking about 20 new Airbnbs, 20 new units. And so I started buying a lot of multifamilies. I started buying a lot of single families that have four bedrooms that have a pool. And so that's how I've been able to grow and scale super quickly. But one of the other ways that you can scale just like me it's through co-hosting. All right. Co-hosting it's done. Um, it's just like you have no risk because it's not your money. So what you do is that you go and you talk to a landlord, or maybe you have friends that they own long-term rentals. And so you talk to those friends that you know that have long-term rentals. And then you're like, Hey, you know what? Let's try Airbnb. I know how to be an Airbnb host because I took the, the free webinar with Heidi or I bought her course. And so you're able to be an Airbnb host. And then once you start doing Airbnb, you're like, hey, you know what? Um, I can definitely help you get more cash flow for your property. And so long-term rentals, they are in the passive income phase. They want passive income. They don't want to have to work for the, in for the income. That's why they buy real estate. But see, Airbnb, it's not passive. If you're the one doing it, it's not passive. You have to make some work. You have to do some work. But if you don't have a way to buy property, then I would highly suggest for you to start co-hosting. Because if you start co-hosting, you start adding this value into your friends or someone that you know that has a long-term rental. It's not going to be your money that it's going to be spent, but it's going to be your experience or your knowledge or your sweat equity. And so that's when you start trading your sweat equity for someone else's, you know, money so that they can really build this Airbnb. You're going to do the work. You're going to stage it and design. You're going to do everything for it. And then once it's ready, you get like, that's what your contract has to state that, Hey, you know, you're going to be paying me a commission from the amount of revenue that comes through. And so you talk to them and see how, what's going to be your commission because you're the one doing all the work. Now, this is what I'm saying. Like, it's less risk for you because you didn't have to put any money out of your pocket because it's not your property. But at the same time, it's still passive income for them. So I, I currently manage 15 Airbnbs for other people. Yeah. And I was able to grow that super fast because I have the systems. I have the checklist. I have the contracts. I have everything I need in order to make the next Airbnb. And so again, the contract is the most important thing. Don't get into co-hosting without having a contract with that landlord. And again, but you're not arbitraging. You know, when you arbitrage, it means that you're making, you're giving them a rent, a security. And I don't do that. I don't give my co-hosting partners a security of nothing. I do not guarantee anything, even though I am the Airbnb queen, even though I know that they will cash flow, I don't guarantee nothing because there's really no guarantee. And so I can't be guaranteeing because it doesn't make sense. And it doesn't make sense for them to have a rent 
for sure, like, oh, it's I'm getting my my payment every single month. And then you taking all the risk when it's not even your property. See, that's why I don't do arbitrage. But if you decide to co-host, you know, let's suppose you charge them 10, 15, 20, 30 percent commission. Well, they're going to keep the rest. And they and for them, it was still passive income. But for you, you're the one working it. And, you know, it's cool. You're going to work less when you start automating your systems. And then you're going to work even less once you start growing and you start growing a team and you start getting your staff and you start doing all of the things. So, you know, I would suggest that if you don't have enough money to buy a property, I would highly recommend you to get into co-hosting. All right. And that way you're, you're always making money from the commission. If they don't make money, you don't make money. So you're going to make sure that you make money and you're going to make sure that that property gets fucked. Okay. So we have a question. We have another question from Veronica. Do we need to have another type of insurance for my home? Yes. So if you if this is going to be your home and you're going to be renting, let, let's say you're going to be renting the basement or something, I would suggest for you to make this home, um, you can add an umbrella for a rental insurance. And it's not renter's insurance, okay? It's rental insurance because now you're a landlord. So you have to make sure that you, well... I don't usually buy the really expensive insurance because um, because it's really expensive. <laughs> But if you talk to your insurance broker and if you don't have an insurance broker or if you guys don't know what to do, let, let me know. Like send me a message. We're actually going to be sending this recording over as well. But I do have an insurance broker that I work with directly and she can help you guys and she can get you deals um, because she already knows exactly what to do with your home if it's going to become a short-term rental. So again, it's a, a little bit different. If you're still living in the property or if it's going to be just, it's a home, it's yours, it's a property, then I would suggest for you to add the like have a rental insurance because you're not living there a, you're a landlord but if you are living there then make sure that you're able to add a, some sort of umbrella to make sure that you are covered because see if someone else does do the damage then you need to make sure that it gets covered by the insurance and another thing that i can state right now it's the fact that it, air cover does exist all right air cover exists but it really exists for minor things If you do get into a big problem, Airbnb will reimburse you. See, this is the trick. People think that Airbnb, it's an insurance policy, and it's not. They will reimburse you. So you, you first have to pay for the stuff that you need get reimbursed. They're not going to pay you to go buy it or pay you to get it fixed. You first have to do it. So if anything happens to your property, at least you have some sort of reimbursement coming over. See, when you do long-term rental, um, it's only your security deposit and your insurance policy. That's it. So most of the time, your insurance policy won't cover whatever damages your tenants did to the property. So who's going to be the one paying for all of the repairs in order to be able to rent it again? It's going to be you. And so at least with Airbnb, if something does happen, you still have to pay for the repairs to get it up and running again, but you have someone reimbursing you for all the things that you spend. And for me, I mean, that sounds a pretty good deal. Okay. And so, you know, again, we're going to show you really quickly just the offers again, just so you guys can take a screenshot if you didn't take it before. Can we show them really quickly? Make sure that you guys take a screenshot um, because I really want to be able to get done in time and we only have about 10 minutes left. Okay, so, all right, let's go. Um, the last thing that we want to talk to you guys about is staging and design. Okay, and so staging and design, it's the whole thing that happened during this challenge. The only reason why I was able to do this challenge in time was because I followed the systems and I was able to work my relationships and get all of my furniture and everything into the home as soon as possible. And if it wouldn't have been for them, then I wouldn't have been able to finish the challenge on time. And so what is it the things that you have to think about when you're doing staging and design is that you have to think about what is it that I'm bringing into the property, really choose a design quickly. If you have all the time in the world, go ahead, hire a designer, hire someone to help you out. Maybe you're doing construction, but in the case of a 24 hour challenge, you know, I really came down to Pinterest. 
That's why I love about Pinterest. You know, it's free. YouTube's free too. You always can just check out something out and see, well, what goes with this palette? What goes with this color palette? What goes with this home? And so I was able to just get everything from Pinterest really quickly. I saw what I wanted. And then I went into the furniture store. I was like, hey, what do we have available that it's ready that day? Right. And so for me, I was in a rush because I needed it done that exact same day. But for you, you might have more time. So you can start ordering things online or you can start ordering things into that furniture store. And that's going to take a little bit longer for them to be ready. But it's okay because you got the time. I didn't have the time. So I was like running against the clock. Um, but see, like the staging and design, it is a really important factor for you to provide every essential possible for your guests. And so I'm not talking about, oh, it already looks pretty. No. Is it functional? Is it also functional? It can't just be pretty, you guys. If you add something into a short-term rental just because it's pretty, but it's actually on the way, it, it really, like, it, it's not working, that's not the point. You have to make it functional. So that's why I add a lot of wall scones. That's like one of a, a really good example. See, I love to do lamps on the side of the table, but sometimes, um, most of the time, I like to do wall scones because that frees up my nightstand situation so people can just, you know, place it, their stuff there. They can put their phone, they can charge their phone. Another thing that I like to do is that I like to buy nightstands that already have uh, plugins, right? They have USB ports or we change the outlets so that we can make it a, a USB and C type. Um, so how can we make it functional for our guests? How can we make it easy for them, for them to have a great experience? And so that's like a quick tip that I would say, like, it's like really think about function and then and then make it pretty. Right. But if it's not functional and it's just pretty, it's going to be worthless. You really have to think about how can it be functional as well for my Airbnb guests. And so another thing that we love to do, it's, for example, um, you know, our, our TVs are always smart TVs. We make sure that they're able to already like log in. I'm not saying to get them Netflix or YouTube or anything like that, but no, everything's already set up. They don't have to be like worrying about like, oh, what should I do here? Hey, like this is so complicated. But another thing would just be like in a staging and design standpoint, you know, on your essentials checklist, make sure that you provide everything that they can do for what you are giving them. So if you have a chef's kitchen and then you don't even have enough spices you don't even have like cooking oil you don't even have enough knives then that's gonna be look like that's gonna look bad on you and that's gonna get you bad reviews and again we always have to be make sure that we are always getting the best reviews possible so um that's why it's really important for you guys to really offer as much as you can and the only thing that i will tell you is that yes it's true the little things will start piling up but see, this is my budget. Usually, everything I buy here locally in El Paso, and I go to downtown, I go to the businesses downtown because usually that's like the, the least expensive place that I can buy all of the kitchen stuff. So I go to downtown, I, it's called Uno Plus El Paso, and I'm able to buy all of the things that I know that I'm going to be using. But again, I don't like all of the utensils. <laughs> They're like a dollar, you guys. It's like a dollar for like, 12 i don't know like it's like really inexpensive and so like again like the fake plants like things that i like to use like even even like uh our kettles and the the um, the britas like you know how much the brita is at walmart it's like 29.99 you know how much i get it in downtown 6.99 you guys, there's ways, okay? There's ways for you to save money in things so that you don't go over budget so that you can actually spend the money where you should. Where should you spend the money from your budget for your for your furniture? It's going to be your beds, good quality beds, good mattresses. People are, are staying in your property to sleep. You have to spend good quality on, on the bedding, I get 100% cotton for everything, 100% cotton for my sheets, 100% cotton for my duvets, 100% cotton for my towels. See, that's where you can spend money because that's what your, your guests are going to be using. But you don't have to go spending money into buying, you know, all of the kitchen supplies that there's so many. You know, you can spend like a nice $12.99 on a coffee maker, but then you can spend on a Keurig. You can have the best of both worlds, but I wouldn't have a like a $300 espresso machine unless I'm offering 
a luxurious property. See, that's like where you have to really decide what's my budget going to. And if I can tell you right now, your budget first should be going into your furniture. It should be going into a really comfortable sofas. It should be going into a really nice dining table that makes sure that the dining table, if you have a, a home for eight people, that you can actually see, sit eight people in the dining table. That's super important too. So that's what you have to think about. It's not really about, oh, well, yeah, it's so many little things. Yeah, find a place where you can buy all of those miscellaneous things cheaper so that you can spend your good money into the things that will matter for your guests. Because we don't want beds breaking in the middle of the night, all right? And you guys have to understand that people are there to sleep, people are there to eat, and you have to provide as much things as possible in that area. Again, with the smart TV, you know, you're not going to put a smart TV that it's like your old TV just because you have it there. No, like really start adding things to add value into your property, into your Airbnb. And that's why staging and design, it's super important. You really have to see what would you like to have if you were staying there? What would you think it's missing? See, I've seen so many like Airbnbs where they have like, like they only have one pillow, one pillow. Seriously? Like, do you sleep with one pillow? Cause I sure as, I sure as hell don't. Like I sleep with like four. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and so that's, what's important. Like every, every king size bed, I have two king size pillows and I have four standard size pillows. For my queen size, I have two king size pillows and then I have two standard size pillows. See, king size has six pillows, queen size has four pillows. But that's what's important. Sometimes, like, it's easy for you to forget, but it's like, like, would you feel comfortable staying like that? Okay, so we have a question. Go, go, go. Yes, uh, Denise asks, um, do you have a list of local places you go on a daily basis? If you're here in El Paso, yes, I do. <laughs> and we can definitely share that with you. Um, you know, like let us know and like send us your email. Well, we have your email. So we can definitely share that. Just as my team will make a note and then we can share you like the local businesses that I work with. Because again, I'm, I'm definitely here to recommend them. They're amazing. They help me out. And if they help me out and you tell them that I send you, uh, you're going to get a discount. And so that's what I'm here for. Okay. And so... Um, you know, again, what, what was really like something that we went through during the time that we were here? It's the fact that the 24 hour challenge was super hard. We didn't have electricity, you guys. <laughs> we had the people like assembling the furniture and they were like sweating and it was so hot here in El Paso, Texas. Like it's stupid hot. And so it was like, oh, oh man. And, but then the night came. Like we lost all the light and we're like, oh my God, what am I going to do? Like we have to stop working. And it's like, wait, I bought all of these like light candles for decor. So we started lighting them up and we were able to finish at least that day. We were able to finish what was missing because we light up the candles. So these things like, you know, it, it might only happen to me, but you know, you're going to get into, into some hurdles and it's how you really go about it. That talks more about you than, than anything else. And so, you know, we really enjoyed this challenge. It was such a good thing. And I want to tell you guys really quickly, you know, I thank you for you're like staying with me the whole time. I'm really excited. We are thinking about doing more of these free live webinars and I'm going to tell you guys my biggest why right now the reason why I do Airbnb. It's because it has given me the financial freedom to retire at 30 years old. It has given me the flexibility to do with my time as I see fit. It has given me, most importantly, the time to be part and present in my daughter's <laughs> in my daughter's time. Anything that she needs, I'm always there for her. And I think that's something that I highly, highly would like for everyone to experience. It's to have those things for you. And if I could do it, I know that this is possible for all of us. So if you're thinking about joining the hospitality industry, make sure to let me know, make sure to talk to us and we'll see you next time.